I'm Leah. I work in youth services and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is The Cat in the Hat Comes Back. Hi, I'm Tisha and I work in youth services and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is To Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street. Hi, I'm Sai. I work in youth services. My favorite Dr. Seuss book is One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. I'm Tammy and I work in circulation and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is Fox in Socks. Hi, I'm Bethany. I work in genealogy and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is Oh, The Places You'll Go. Hello, I'm Diane and I'm the assistant director and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is The Lorax. I'm Caitlin. I work in circulation and my favorite Dr. Seuss book is Hop on Pop. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the manager here at Dewey's. My favorite Dr. Seuss book is Green Eggs and Ham. If your favorite Dr. Seuss book is The Cat in the Hat, well, this is the biography for you. It's called Imagine That, How Dr. Seuss Wrote The Cat in the Hat. It was written by Judy Sierra and illustrated by Kevin Hawks. It was published by Random House, and we are so happy they're letting us read it to you today. Nineteen fifty-four was a great year to be a kid. There were five cent donuts and one cent lollipops. Rock and roll had just hit the record shops. Bookstores brimmed with exciting new books like Charlotte's Web. The Lord of the Rings, and Horton Hears a Who. Nineteen fifty four was a great year to be a kid, unless you were trying to learn to read. For some reason, first graders weren't making the leap from reading a few words to reading a whole book. Grown ups were stumped. What could the problem be? Kids knew the answer. School readers were just plain boring. A famous writer named John Hersey agreed with the kids. He had an idea for solving the problem and wrote about it in Life magazine. What kids needed was a beginning reader so exciting that they couldn't stop turning the pages. Who could write a book like that? Only the funniest children's author in the land. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, we insist. Won't you please write a book that no kid can resist? P.S. Use only the words on this no-nonsense list. Ted, as he was known to his friends, had already published nine big picture books. Books like If I Ran the Zoo and Scrambled Egg Super and Fidwick the Big Hearted Moose. They were funny and kids loved them. But could he write and illustrate a first grade reader? Of course, a short little book like that would only take one or two weeks. Or so he thought. Each morning after breakfast, Ted went upstairs to his studio. He had a chair and a desk, a drawing board for drawing, and a typewriter for writing. He also had a closet full of outlandish hats. When he couldn't think of the right words, a suitable hat was sure to help. Writing a beginning reader was not as simple as it seemed. For one thing, Ted liked to invent new words for his books. Words like ooblick and to catch and yurka and wumbus and hippo no hungus and dippo no dungus. 
but in this book, he would only be able to use words from the official list. I shall write a rip-roaring book about a queen zebra, Ted declared. He checked the official list. Queen? No, not on the list. Zebra? No, not on the list. Maybe a book about a bird. I like birds. Bird? Not on the list? No! Ted glared at the list. He spied the word cat and he spied the word hat. Cat rhymes with hat, so I'll just start with that. He reached for his crayons and his colored pencils. The cat needed a whiz-bang story. Ted doodled. His stories often began with a doodle. He daydreamed. He tapped at the keys of his typewriter. He donned several hats as he sat in his chair and stared at the list. In his head, Ted juggled the words on the list. Then he thought, hmm, why not let the cat juggle instead? He can juggle the stuff on the list too, yes he can. He can juggle a rake and a book and a fan. He can juggle a fish and the fish won't like that. I will draw two nice kids to have fun with the cat. And two naughty things and a keen cleaner upper, I think I'll get started tonight after supper. Ted pondered how kids learn to read. He had a hunch that easy rhymes and funny drawings would help them guess the words they didn't know. He used tricks to coax readers to turn the pages. For example, he put the word bump in huge letters at the top right edge of page five. What made that bump sound? Kids had to turn the page to find out. Ted drew, he redrew, he wrote, he revised. It took more than a year until he was satisfied the book was funny enough and exciting enough and all around stupendous enough for kids learning to read. Ted delivered the manuscript to his publishers in New York. They loved it. Soon, huge sheets of paper rolled off giant printing presses. Workers used special machines to fold the paper, cut it into pages, sew the pages together, and sandwich each book between two covers. They loaded the books onto trucks, and the trucks rumbled away to libraries, bookstores, and to schools. It didn't take long for the news to spread from kid to kid, from coast to coast. There was a new book, an easy book, a book that was so much fun, you just couldn't stop reading it. Everyone had to have a copy of The Cat in the Hat. Ted traveled to Boston, New York, and Chicago to meet kids, sign their books, and give autographs. The first grade reader was a smashing success. He had done it. He had created a fantastic book using only 236 different words. But the great Dr. Seuss didn't stop there. No, he wrote a sequel called The Cat in the Hat Comes Back. And he started to publish more books for kids who were beginning to read. One day, 
Ted's friend, Bennett Cerf, proposed the ultimate challenge. He bet that Ted couldn't write a beginning reader using only 50 different words. Could he? Would he? Yes! In fact, he could do it here or there. He could do it anywhere. With the help of a clever young fellow named Sam I Am and a whopping big serving of green eggs and ham. Imagine that. At the back of the book, there are some other things about Dr. Seuss and how he wrote, and also about the author and the illustrator. Those are always fun things to read when you check out a book. And that's Imagine That, how Dr. Seuss wrote The Cat in the Hat. So now you know the story behind one of our favorite books and how it changed reading for kids for ever. If you want to let me know what your favorite Dr. Seuss book is, just put it in the comments below. We can't wait to find out.